All right. Welcome to Answers News. Uh, you're blessed with uh, Dr. Georgia Purdom and myself, Bodie Hodge, today. Ken was going to be here. I know. But, but he backed out on us at the last minute. and Because uh, he had to go see Casting Crowns at the Ark. Yeah, know? they're at the Ark. And, you know, I don't know if Ken wanted to meet them or if, or if they wanted to meet Ken. I don't know, I don't know what it was. <laughs> I don't know how that works. But, but uh, they did do a Facebook Live earlier. Uh, it was a shorter one there around 1230. So you can find that on Ken's uh, uh, Facebook site if you want to back up and take a look mm -hmm. at some of that. Yep. Yep. But, uh, you know, as people are going to be hopping on here. They are. Yeah, all right, we've got 100, a good number already. 200, so. All right. Yeah. Well, all right. let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Uh, this first article, I don't know if you guys have been following Bill Nye's new program. Uh, Bill Nye Saves the World is what it's called. I don't know if he realized, but, you know, well, we already have a Savior. Well, we, we've already got one. He's, it's, it's, he's a That's sufficient right. Savior. But, but he wants to save the world with science. With, right? with That's science, what it's yeah. all about. With secular know? science. With secular, with secular scientism. Beliefs. That That's science right. is the only yes. way to do that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, he had one on that. Uh, one oh, episode. It, it, it was shocking. Uh, um, fact is, the, the World Net Daily decided to publish an article on it because... If I told you just to go watch the video, I, I don't know if I could do that in good conscience. I cannot in good conscience tell you yeah. to watch the video. It was one of the episodes <clears throat> in which he had basically a music video, um, and it is, it's smut. Yeah. That's the only one. Well, the fact is, that's what World Net Daily entitles the article. Yeah. Science guy? Question mark. How about smut peddler? Question yeah. mark. And and that's really more like what it was. It was. And, it was really and they bad. World Net Daily interviewed both Ken Ham and Ray Comfort, and Ray Comfort um, yeah. about the video. And so, um, you know, you can go there and learn more about it. But what I said when I I did watch it, and I said it's it was just very much a display, in my opinion, of people shaking their fist at God and mm -hmm. saying, you know, we will do what we want to do when it comes to sexuality yeah. and gender. And Bill Nye agreed with that. Right? He said, yeah, he did. He said, that's, that's, that's exactly, exactly the message. Because they're saying you can do whatever yeah. you want sexually, you know, regardless. If it feels good, do it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know what? I mean, you, you look at the lyrics of this song. It was called My Sex Junk. It was terrible. Um, the, the lyrics, I mean, they would actually leave open things like mm -hmm. rape. Or pedophilia. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just horrendous stuff. So, I mean, I, anything goes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I want to encourage parents, you know, keep an eye on your kids. You know, I mean, th this is the direction the culture is moving. Well, and Bill Nye's encouraging it. And the Netflix series is rated, I think, 14 and up. And I got to tell you, there's no way I'd even let my teen watch oh. um, this. I want adults about, to watch it. it was well, bad. and we have a review of the series up on our website. Um, so, you can look at that too. But there's really not much science in mm. it. I mean, if he's supposed to save the world with science, you would think there would be more of that in there. But well, there's yeah, so. there, there's definitely shock value in all this. But, yeah. uh, you know, one of the things that I noticed was the, the YouTube video of the clip. Oh, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, you know, there was a few hundred likes on it, but the, the thumbs down was... Mm -hmm. what, what just, Tens there, of thousands. Yeah, it was like 50, around 50,000 or so. And I think so. it's had over 700,000 views. So it was yeah. amazing to see... It almost yeah. pushed like even liberals like too far, and so that's yeah. pretty, that's pretty shocking. Yeah, so. it really was pushing some of that. So another um, another one of the episodes um, on it was uh, he talks about um, overpopulation, you know, climate change, overpopulation, all yeah, that th stuff. These are and, things he's really on. And about. the article um, in the Federalist said Bill Nye has had enough of your extra kids. So basically. Mm. The idea in it was he actually, because he was saying how American kids, he had a panel discussion, how American kids have a larger carbon footprint um, than, yep. say, kids in Nigeria. And so he suggested basically a, um, should there be some sort of penalty for having extra kids? Now, I don't know what how you define how many extra. See, you're in trouble. You have four. So I, I've I got four kids. Yeah. yeah. So I think you're going to have... I mean, imagine paying, those families that have 12 kids. 12, yeah. You know, You'd ages 12 to 1. You'd have to pay basically, for having more than a certain amount. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say the other panelists kind of jumped on that and said, whoa, you're infringing on human rights. Yeah. And this is going... This is eugenics. Even it's one of the eugenics. people said that. And it is. Because poorer people then can't afford the extra mm -hmm. money. So they have less kids. And rich people have more kids. And that's that's a form of eugenics. of being yeah well-born and all of that so it yeah it's, it's i mean they're, they're pushing things like forced sterilization you know yes. how, how far would they go i mean would they go well, as far as the nazis you know the nazis are like well you know what we don't need any more of these guys let's get rid of them well we did it here in america they, we've done I it mean, here in the states this is up until the 1970s things like this yeah. were still well, in practice well even in china so, they had the one right. uh, one mm -hmm. child rule which they've repealed that's yeah. that's no longer part right of it. right but uh, i mean l look how that's affected their culture uh, yeah, know, so, there. yes, exactly. And it just goes to show you that uh, his, this whole show about Bill Nye Saves the mm -hmm. World, it's just about, first of all, his agenda. 
Mm -hmm. um, and about popularizing himself and his ideas um, about things, not really about science. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of science, there's a really cool one here, and I wanted to pull this one Mm -hmm. up. Uh, You know, uh, when it comes to oil, you know, crude oil, things like that, Mm -hmm. how many times have we been told it takes millions of years to form crude oil? I mean, we see that all the time. time. You're burning fossil fuels Mm -hmm. and things like that. Well, uh, researchers at Pacific Northwest Northwest yeah. National Laboratory, you know, they have shown that you can take algae and form it into crude oil in oh, about neat. 30 minutes. Well, this is a, a this is further research. Of course, they, what what they do is they kind of heat it up and pressurize it, and mm-hmm. boom, you can turn it right in there. 30 minutes. I mean, that's really fast. Yeah. Now, what uh, there was a, a a news item that came out here came from Science Daily, making oil from algae toward more efficient biofuels. Mm-hmm. And what they've done is they've actually isolated a particular uh, algae Mm -hmm. uh, from brackish waters, which is kind of mixed between salt and and, and fresh, and uh, it it grows fast. And if you put a little salt water in there with it, what it does is it actually grows oil inside of it. Hmm. It grows oil. And and in seven days, if I remember right, it was in seven days, 45% of the cell weight had become oil. Wow. So within just a matter of days, you can produce renewable oil just from algae. Yeah, and there's so many of these types of, I think, untapped natural resources that that we could be using and utilizing, and and that's why that kind of research is important. Yeah, I love seeing stuff. The fact is, in the book that Ken Ham and I did, uh, A Flood of Evidence, we go through, it mm -hmm. doesn't take millions of years to form oil or coal or gemstones. You just have the right conditions. Yeah, yeah, stalactites and stalagmites, things like that. Okay, so we're getting lots of emojis. Keep sending them. Fireworks, right? Yeah, you know what that means. It gets out there more, and that's a good thing. And Ken will be happy with us. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> we'd like to keep our jobs. Yeah. So please, please put emojis on there. All right. So this next article comes from Live Science, and it's Stone Age woman had modern looking face. Yes. Here, let me show you the face. Hopefully, we get this kind of right in here. Hopefully, you can see that. But uh, it just looks like uh, a person, a lady. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, and they're kind of surprised because they think, yeah. oh, this has been. They put it at thirteen thousand years ago, yeah. so they think. So they want us should, to look different. Right, but, because they believe yeah. we evolved from some sort of ape-like ancestor, mm-hmm. and, and these people should look dramatically different yeah. from people today, but they really don't. No, they really don't. They, they look like people. Now, here's the thing. This is a person. After the Tower of Babel, they're spreading around right. to different mm-hmm. parts of the mm-hmm. world. Uh, so, you know, we expect them to look well, like Right, people. and they have certain <laughs> maybe pronounced characteristics yeah. that we don't see as often or as common That's in the right. population today, but that doesn't mean that it's not human or that it's... And right. they're not saying that, but... Yeah. Um, but for them, I think it, it's harder to accept these kinds of things because they just go against the evolutionary ideas. That's so. right. All well, right. the next one comes from Science News. Young eels use magnetic sixth sense to navigate. And yeah, <laughs> this is neat. I thought that was kind of new, uh, neat. It comes from Science News, and it explains how these things are able to actually go around in the ocean and, and get to places. Right, because they usually that, will mate and lay eggs in different places than they normally actually reside. Yeah. So how do they know where mm-hmm. to go? You know, that's always the deal with migration. Mm-hmm. And so they use the Earth's magnetic field, apparently, to yep. be able to know um, where to go. And what's amazing to me is they even do it in such a way that they take advantage of ocean currents mm-hmm. to be able to do that. They actually yeah. go north first to be able to go south yeah. because they catch kind a current follows the Atlantic way. Ocean as yeah. it goes up toward England. And I'm thinking, how does something like that evolve? You know, I mean, when you read that and yeah. you think about the amazing complexity, even mm-hmm. correlating it with ocean currents. Well, you know, other animals utilize the magnetic field mm-hmm. as well. You know, a lot sure. of birds, birds uh, particularly too. migrating mm-hmm. birds, you know, they can... They can travel quite a distance. You mm-hmm. know, there, there's even uh, re- records of some of these things have been taken to as far as Australia, mm-hmm. and they'll zip all the way back to North America or something. It's, right. it's, it's even, fascinating. There's even fish and bacteria mm-hmm. that use have magnetic parts to them, so yeah. to speak, that enable them to use the magnetic field for we know, different reasons. You know, we think of birds. You know, we see a lot of Canadian geese flying over here in the mm-hmm. Midwest. I saw you know? some today in the yeah, field. Yeah, just, yeah, 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 I saw some out here. Yeah. And, you know, when they fly, you, you'll see they fly in a formation. Mm-hmm. And you got the lead goose. And, and what it is is, you know, the lead goose for a time will take the brunt of, uh, of going right, through the air, and the, the rest air. will mm-hmm. actually ride uh, right on the currents mm-hmm. on the currents Basically, essentially yeah, yeah and you know these animals are brilliant you know the same sort of things occurring here with the eels right. you know they're they're going to utilize the currents they're going to take advantage of that sort of stuff mm-hmm. they, they can sense these things right they're, you know they're yeah. uh, God they're incredibly them, designed designed yeah. them right to be able to that's do right that, even so. in a sink cursed and broken world they can do this right so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we're getting lots of good responses. Okay. And they said, wow, renewable oil from algae in a very short time. So, yeah. Now, why is the price of gas going up? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. That's right. All right. This next one comes from the Sun in the UK. And it says, came well, from the Sun? 
Oh. I'm off that side. Okay. <laughs> Flory's man, hobbits, found in Indonesia, were not direct relatives of modern humans, scientists confirm. So these are kind of short humans, okay? They're very short. They're called hobbits, and um, but they are they have a more scientific name than that. The Flores, or that part, that's yeah. part of their, where they were found. That's yeah. part of their scientific name. So it's near Indonesia where this, where this, mm -hmm. uh, these organisms were first found. And so what they discovered, or what they think, is that really they, they were not an ancestor of modern humans. They were kind of an offshoot that mm -hmm. then didn't, don't exist anymore today. Right. Yeah, out in the secular world, what, what they keep looking for is where's the ancestor of a man? Mm -hmm. Where's the ancestor? So, yeah. so that's the big news. Now, here's what they found. You know, they, 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 the fact is they found these a number of years ago. But uh, right, yeah, they realized, hey, they're not that, that common ancestor. Right. Uh, what they're saying is that is one of the branches that come off. And you know what? I, yeah. I would kind of agree on, on that perspective. I wouldn't agree with everything in the article, naturally. Right. But, uh, you know, as people come off of Noah's Ark, mm -hmm. we start to get a, a, a sizable population at the mm -hmm. Tower of Babel. People go to various parts of the world taking particular gene pools with them. Right. And uh, you know, so you know, at that stage, it's it's not a big deal to have a group of people who are well. You've smaller, got like Neanderthals, taller, you've got yeah. Denisovans, you've got yeah. other probably very similar to right. this that migrated out, maybe did a lot of you know mm -hmm. marrying within that group, and since and those are the traits that dominate that right. that, that, right. that population. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we see that one of the things that they said in here is they thought, well, maybe maybe these people, their ancestors, went out to Java Island. Mm -hmm. uh, which is the, the most populated island of, of Indonesia. I mean, right. it, it's heavily populated compared to some of the other areas. And then they do that as a jumping off spot. Now, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. When you look at a historical perspective, you know, I did a lot of work on the Tower of Babel, Java, Javan, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, all that. Java is actually one of Noah's grandsons. Mm -hmm. And right. that's actually right. what we would call Greece in the Old Testament was Java or Javan. And... Uh, you know, so that's some of his descendants that go out there. And that, you know, they were some of the early coastline people. It's an early settlement. So a lot of people probably went out there and jumped off mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. from that area. So it actually makes sense from a historical sure. perspective. But they're not different species. That's they're right. Not, they're not different I mean, species. They're all, we're all human beings. And they really. have the timeline wrong. You know, they, right. they never sure. question the dates. Yeah. Well, so, because it's, it's not a, it's a yeah. worldview issue. It's not a scientific <laughs> yeah, one. That's, that's right. That's for sure. So, so that's neat stuff. All right. Oh, right. this next one. We said we could have a whole episode just mm. on this article. Alone. We sure could. This is from the Wheaton Record, which is the, I believe, the student newspaper of Wheaton College. And it's called Evolving Thoughts on Origins. So uh, yeah. at Wheaton, they, they're not necessarily required to take this class. My understanding is it's not a requirement, but it can yeah. count as a science credit on um, the theories of origins. I believe that's mm -hmm. what it's called. And so they did some surveys with this class. They've done surveys for several yep. years to determine what the students' beliefs are when they enter the class and what they are when they leave the class. And yep. that's where it gets really sad. It really, the fact is they got five different professors. One of them is John Walton yep. that will teach mm -hmm. that. Uh, if you're familiar with John Walton, John Walton holds to an evolutionary worldview and uh, he has a uh, cosmic Co temple. Cosmic Temple, cosmic temple view, is, is his view, called. which is, you know, if you've ever heard of things like gap theory or theistic evolution, mm -hmm. this is one of those variations. Right. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you, you know, some of the results shocked us in here. Um, yeah. I, I could, well, I let's mean, just say, from a big picture, a lot of kids come in there, mm -hmm. and a number of them actually hold to what the, what the Bible says too. in Genesis as being true, and when they leave the class, a huge portion of them... Sometimes as much as 100% will walk out of the class no longer believing Genesis. Yeah. And yet Wheaton's supposed to be a Christian college. Yeah. And I think when, when I was reading these statistics, what it really said to me was the importance of parents in really educating their children and the church and educating mm -hmm. their children. And not just, oh, yeah, creation's true, but apologetics. How do we How defend, defend, defend the faith, right? Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of these kids may have went in believing it, but they haven't been taught good apologetics. They have no idea how to defend it. If they've never even heard of some of these other views, that I mean, yeah. that then they're, they're not being taught apologetics. I mean, That's I right. would want my daughter to know. Yeah, here's theistic evolution. Here's gap theory. Here's what all these are, and here's the problem. Yeah, here's with the them. problems with them: death right. before sins, a huge problem, things like that. Uh, but I think a lot of parents they don't realize this of some of these uh, Christian colleges. We call them compromised Christian colleges because right, right, yeah. what they're doing is they're compromising Genesis, and mm -hmm. instead they're, they're they're basically throwing Genesis one to eleven right. out the window or reinterpreting mm -hmm. it so that they can bring an evolutionary worldview in and teach that to the kids. So what they're doing is they're taking a different religion, mm -hmm. a secular humanistic yeah. religion on origins, they're bringing it in, they're trying to mix it with their Christianity. 
properly, that's called syncretism. And so mm -hmm. what's happening mm -hmm. is, is a, a Christian college like Wheaton is saying, let's get right. rid of Genesis, and let's come over here and take another religion's origins account, bring it over here, mm -hmm. and let's impose that upon the kids. Well, and that's what you see. One of the professors that, um, for the course says, um, the science was there, but I needed to know how to bring this in scripturally. So what we see is science is being the ultimate authority, not the word of God. So mm -hmm. they're, so that's essentially what's happening is they're using science yeah. to interpret the Bible, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, science from a secular view, science starting with man's ideas about the past, and then trying to fit that with scripture. And that becomes the ultimate problem of what mm -hmm. they're doing. I, I thought it was interesting. Uh, they, they talked to a freshman here. He was a physics major. Mm -hmm. And uh, he recounts feeling pressure to become an old earth creationist upon coming to Wheaton. Yeah. He said, I came in a uh, young earth, basically believing what Genesis says, mm -hmm. and just got hit. It was really skewed. It was not both sides. It was basically they were trying to impose that uh, religious belief upon these kids right. uh, to take them away from what, what Christ said in Genesis. Mm -hmm. See, we need to remember, Genesis is Christ's word. Right. Sometimes we, we get right, this mentality, yeah. well, if the it's red, red letters, it's yeah. Jesus. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no. Jesus is God, and therefore the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation, that is Christ's word. Mm -hmm. And so what's happening is uh, these kids are at a Christian college. are being taught that what Jesus said yeah, uh, really wasn't So right. the title of this article, somebody asked, Evolving Thoughts on Origins. And so we do have um, all of the article um, links pinned, um, so you can see those if you need to reference that. But what it does say to me, too, is that parents, you need to be really careful where you're sending your kids to college. Mm -hmm. Just because it says it's a Christian college doesn't mean it really is. Right. And so you need to, um, one good place to start is our website, creationcolleges.org, yes. um, to find out information on colleges that do hold to our um, beliefs on, uh, answers in the Bible's beliefs on origin. Right. Um, stand with us on biblical authority and the truth of God's word. So it's a great, great place yeah. to start. Wheaton is definitely not on that list, and they never will. Yeah, you know, I don't think they've ever contacted Kit Ham or you to say, hey, would you no. come up and teach his class for us? Well, that's what I thought. Like, if it's theories of origins, why wouldn't you have, like, multiple, you know, yeah. people come in and present, like a gap theorist and a progressive creationist yeah. and a younger creationist? It really is just their views, and that's the problem. Yeah, it's shocking. It really is. Yeah. So, so parents beware. Yeah. All right, this next one comes from stream.org. March for science. A dud. <laughs> So we have a lot of these marches lately. Like, everyone's marching, you know. Yeah. Um, and this was the March for Science that took place in multiple um, cities, um, not only here in the U.S., but also around the world. Like, London, I believe, mm -hmm. had one. And it wasn't nearly as big as some of these other marches have been, yeah. like, for life. It wasn't even. It wasn't nearly as big as that. Mm -hmm. um, people did turn out. We're not saying that. But it, it's not nearly as big. So what this science, what this science, what this article did was talk about some of the signs and how unscientific they really were. So um, one of them said climate change is, climate change is real. Uh, yeah, no one denies that. Like, we don't <laughs> deny that, right? We can keep yeah. saying that over yeah. and over again. We don't deny that climate change is real. Yeah, we have a, an ice age in our past that right. we have promoted. Yeah. So of course things it's, are changing. It's the yeah. cause of it that is the, that, really the, the issue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another one, climate change cannot be undone by tweeting. And the author said, can it be, can it be done by holding up an idiotic sign? You know, <laughs> I mean, it kind of goes against, not very scientific is what yeah. he's trying to say. Um, make wind not warming was another um, one. And he says, flatulence mm -hmm. jokes in a science march? Where's the respect? Yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> these are not, just like Bill and I's show, yeah. it's not very science -y, you know? Yeah. <laughs> science Well, in it. you know, I, I just keep thinking, you know, that it, it's well known that some of the protesters at some of the marches are paid protesters. They're paid to be there. Yeah. And so sometimes, A, yeah. they don't understand the issue. Now, maybe they've, they've run out of money, and that's why this was kind of a dud. They didn't right. have any protesters. Right. But you know what? It's not like we expect to see some really clever signs. No. Uh, you know, arguing for certain positions on some of this. Well, and, right. and Bill Nye, of course, once again, here we go. I said we could have done the whole episode on Bill Nye. But oh, yeah, we could have That would just too, be too yeah. depressing. So, well, let, let's uh, do another one on Bill Nye. You know, the very, very so Bill Nye one. was there <laughs> at the March for yes, Science, right. and, he, um, and he spoke at that. Oh, we can do them in either order. I yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, the next two are actually on yeah. this march and on Bill right. Nye specifically and his involvement. Right, his involvement in it. Yeah. And so... But they have a transcript of his speech, and he talks about the significance of science for our health and prosperity, um, that, that the process of science has enabled humankind to discover the laws of nature. Well, 
no one that's a good thing no yeah. one denies that right yeah um the question is who made the laws of nature to begin with yeah. um, and, and do you realize most of the, the fields of science were developed by christians right who yeah. followed the bible exactly yeah. they thought that it's a logical orderly god so it should be yeah. a logical orderly um universe right and, you know, he says, without scientifically literate citizens, um, any country cannot compete on the world stage. Well, I would agree. I mean, yeah. I'm not disagreeing with what he's saying here. But the question is, what is science? That's right. That's what it comes See, down. He, he's trying to equate other things as being science. Right. You know, cer certain elements like global warming and, right. and certain things. That, Evolution. Uh, that, that's right. Yeah. Evolution mm -hmm. is one of the main ones, the mm -hmm. millions of years. Right. Dating methods. I mean, mm -hmm. come on. There, there are so many problems with dating methods. It's not even right. funny. Right. But, uh, you know, one of the things that got me was, uh, you know, Bill Nye, they, they really wanted to pull out a, a phrase in the Constitution. Oh, yeah. There's a phrase mm -hmm. in the Constitution that says, to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. So he looks at this and he's like, oh, well, see, the Constitution says the progress of science, therefore you're supposed to be supporting evolution. Mm -hmm. But what he doesn't understand, when the Constitution was written, Evolution was no, right. no, nobody thought of anything mm -hmm. like that. Sure, they would never sure. equate that, that as wasn't science. The idea of it. And uh, Dr. Danny Faulkner uh, uh, wrote something brilliant. He said, uh, "Bill Nye once again displays his ignorance." Uh, it wasn't until the 1830s that William Wewell appropriated the term science to refer to what previously had been known as natural philosophy. Hence, it is very clear that the U.S. Constitution, written in 1787 here, refers to all knowledge, not just science as we know it today. This commits the error of equivocation. Mm -hmm. So what, really what they did is they redefined science, and now they're trying to say, look, the Constitution yes. says support my view. Right. And well, and it even says, he said in his speech, our lawmakers mm -hmm. must know and accept that science serves every one of us. Well, the question is, know and accept their version of science, yeah. what they believe, you know, for historical yeah. science. And really, they've equated that with naturalism, evolutionism, right. which is a religion. Right. And so uh, they're, they're trying to get you to yeah. see And I think this is just one big ego moment for mm -hmm. Bill Nye, to be honest. Yeah. Um, because, yeah. and, and you see that in his show, and you see it here in the March for Science. And it's sad. I mean, I think, obviously, I mean, we mm -hmm. need to pray for him yeah. because he's searching for <laughs> meaning and purpose and significance in life. And yeah. there isn't one in an evolutionary there, there view. Just and he's just trying one. to get it here on Earth, yeah. and that's not what he ultimately needs. Yeah. So. All right. <clears throat> All right. The next one uh, comes from archaeology, the new origins of technology. And uh, this is about finding some ancient tools. Right. Mm -hmm. And the key is the date. It's always right. the dates. Why is it always? Nobody questions the dates. Oh. And, and it frustrates me. I mean, what I need to do is I need to go to one of these big conferences where they're talking about dating methods and say, you know, guys, I'm 18. <laughs> and I want to see them try to, uh, oh, okay, we're not going to question yeah. that date. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You know, would they do that? But what they did, they, they found in Africa uh, some tools mm -hmm. that they claim is in rock layers that is 3.3 million years old. Yeah, that's Which a problem. Is that, that's a problem <laughs> within their own for perspective. Them, for them, yeah. Yeah, I mean, people weren't around then, according right. to that. And uh, you are talking so Lucy, so Australopithecus would have been yeah. the main modern, you know, human That's right. By, by then they say, well, these time. rock layers up here have right. humans. Down here, that's where you have the Australopithecus. Right. And then you keep going. Mm -hmm. And so when they find these tools down there, they're in shock. They're like, uh, right. what do we do? Uh, a, question the dates. But yeah. I don't think no, they're, they're doing not, that. No, they're not going to do that. They're going to, no. like, what they try to go and explain is, well, maybe they did stone tools for a while, because then we don't find any more until about two million years ago. <laughs> so, obviously, yeah. they lost that ability, and, you know, it was just sort of a freak thing yeah. that happened, because it doesn't fit their view, so they have yeah. no idea what to do with yeah. that. And so, yeah, they're, they're really in shock at some of that. Well, they even said, you know, sophistication is evident in these tools. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they weren't like, just like little little trinkets. I mean, right. they, you, you could tell they had to work tools. to actually develop some And then they try things. to say, well, primates could make tools, you know, so maybe that explains it. But primates yeah. don't make tools in the same sense that humans make tools. You know, they yeah. just don't do that. A lot of them are, even talks about it being unintentional tools. Unintentional. Making tools unintentionally. I've, I've seen dogs uh, use tools. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen yeah. squirrels use some things like that. Right. I mean, I mean it's, it's not, fascinating to it's see. It's not the same thing as a human being who That's sees right. a need and invents a tool, like an engineer does, like yourself, yeah. right? Sees a problem, develop a solution. Mm -hmm. It's not the same thing. See, what we need to do is step back, look at this from a biblical viewpoint. Mm -hmm. All right. This is in post flood sediment. Right. Okay. All mm -hmm. this is, it's, it's not a question about that sort of thing. Um, you know, it's not even flood sediment. But even if it was flood sediment, mm -hmm. At the time Noah was alive, we've had people post-flood going all over the world. 
Uh, they were smart. They were intelligent. Even before Noah, people were making flutes. They were making iron tools. They were making all right. sorts of incredible right. things. Yeah. So, I mean, having that technology available to people post-flood makes sense. We, we probably lost a lot of technology at Babel as people mm -hmm. went to different parts of the world, and uh, that technology was split apart. Right. But, uh, I don't know, it shocks me when I, when I see things like this. It's like good research, terrible conclusions. Yeah. Okay. Somebody said on here, you know how you said you could show up somewhere and say you wanted to be 18? Mm -hmm. They said, well, they said, oh, wait, I want to be 18, so... You know, I mean, cool. you can identify as 18, I guess, if you want, because in our, you know, your identity is very fluid nowadays in our society. So if you want to identify as 18, more power to you. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'd like to do that. Um, okay. Uh, next article. And I was like geeking out about this article earlier. Um, yep. But it's Scientific American. And um, it said wild foxes can be transformed into pets in a few generations. So this is a really cool experiment that they did over in Russia. Um, it started in 1958 cool. and is still ongoing today, which is really neat to have yeah. scientists involved in it. The same scientist, he's now 83 years old, wow. um, involved in this. And basically what they did was they tried to figure out how um, dogs originally became, or wolves, I should say, originally mm -hmm. became to become domesticated dogs. Because we yeah. know all dogs are related to each yeah. other. Yeah, we've done genetic studies Genetic on studies sort of and too. all of that. So there's no question about that. Right. Um, so what they did was they started breeding. They did some tests to try to determine which of these foxes were the most tame. And what they would do then is the ones that were the most, seemed the most tame or the most likely to get along least with aggressive humans. kind of right ones, least yeah. aggressive they would then breed those yep. in the next generation by generation six it took six generations that's yeah. it to start generating foxes that could interact better mm -hmm. with humans and um and on a more consistent basis so they continued to do that they wanted to show that it was genetic yeah. Like, not just that it was behavioral. Right. And so they did some embryo transplants between aggressive foxes and more domesticated foxes to show that. I'm not mm -hmm. going to get into all the specifics. It's a really easy-to-read article, so I encourage people to read yeah, it's it. It's long, but it's easy to read. It's, it's long, it's, it's, it's but it's easy to yeah. read. And um, so that showed, they showed definitively through those testing that it was indeed genetic, mm -hmm. um, the fact that they're being more tame. And... And did you have something you wanted to say about that? Oh, not, not necessarily, well, but, yeah. uh, I mean, it, I, I was kind of blown away by it. I mean, I, there are other animals that, that they've done things oh, similar sure, to this sure. with. Uh, you know, they've done experimentations with wolves. You can go out and get, get yourself a wolf cub, but there, there's sure. a particular process they have to go through mm -hmm. uh, to get the ones that are a little bit yeah. more tame, too. Well, yeah. You know, but it's neat to see this with foxes. And, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I've seen all sorts of tame critters. I've seen mm -hmm. tame... I hope they all use the word critters, <laughs> but uh, uh, squirrels, you know, I've seen sure. deer. You know, I mean, yeah. there, there's a lot of animals like that. Now, uh, when, it, when it comes to one that's uh, carnivorous, that's used to hunting, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, there, there's certain things. Dogs are fascinating because a lot of dogs, you know, that say hunters have, you know, they have been trained to hunt certain yes, things. You've got pointers, mm -hmm. you've got retrievers, mm -hmm. you've right. got rabbit dogs and things mm -hmm. like that. So whenever I saw this and I'm like, wow, they're kind of training this into the foxes, I, I, was, I was kind of blown away. So. Yeah. And they, and they call this evolution, though. It's actually under the subtitle mm -hmm. of evolution. They talk about it. Even the scientist talks about it. Well, from an evolutionary perspective, I'm like, no, the foxes are still foxes. They're not even mm -hmm. dogs. They're still foxes. Yeah. Technically speaking, they're just domesticated foxes. And yeah. so they've, now they've done it for like 50-some generations, and about 70% of the cubs or the mm -hmm. kits, not the cubs, kits <laughs> from it will be um, Critters. very, very uh, human friendly, basically. Yeah. They're even developing other characteristics like floppy ears and, and because those things seem to be connected. And they have shown, genetically speaking, most of this is related to chromosome 12 in the foxes. So they've mm -hmm. actually been able to isolate where the domestication where or tameness genes, so to speak, are. So very cool article in Scientific American. Good, great observational science, great experiment. Yeah, neat okay. stuff. All right, next one comes from Science News. Gamma ray evidence for dark matter weakens. And it's actually quite a short article, but yeah. it, it, it's it's fascinating. You know, we actually mm -hmm. commented on some of the dark matter and people questioning some of Danny that. Danny Faulkner, our astronomer, yeah, has, we had him um, on it. talked about it in a DVD. That's mm -hmm. right. And the fact is, we, we got stuff like this on our website, too. But right. uh, one of the things, uh, you know, an astrophysicist from Los Alamos National Laboratory 
uh, was looking at some of the results, and he's like, hold on a second. You know, what you're seeing, these gamma rays coming from the galactic center uh, of the Milky Way, mm -hmm. are really no different from what we see oh. in the control regions. Right, right. So he's yeah. like, how can you guys make... make <laughs> yeah. It seems like they jumped to conclusions. I, I think that's what they did. Yeah. They jumped the gun on it. They said, hey, look what we find, and they didn't look careful enough at the experiment yeah. to go, well, that's what we're finding everywhere. Yeah. So, it, and, and this, is a, this is a great example of scientists checking other scientists. And that, that's, that's what, what they should, should be. do. That's, yeah. the, that's the process of science. It is. You know, and he even said somebody said um, the the fact that they can't claim dark matter is the cause for these gamma rays. It says mm -hmm. that's a bummer. <laughs> so no evidence, no specific evidence of it. Yeah. So we're going to do one last one here. Oh, I think we, we can do, do this okay, one. Okay, let's try good. to do this one. Okay. Jump science, for cables. science news: <laughs> Immune cells play a surprising role in steady heartbeat. So we've had a lot of these articles recently where, like, lung cells produce platelets and, mm -hmm. you know, glial cells in the brain, well, they're actually helping the neurons uh, help keep the clock, so to speak, the yeah. circadian rhythms. Now we've got macrophages, which is a type of immune cell. They are, they're in between the cardiac muscle cells, and they actually found they're like jumper cables. Right. So they actually pass the charges from one cell mm -hmm. to another cell, which enable the heart to have a regular heartbeat, which yeah. you appreciate yeah. completely. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> having, having heart issues myself. Yeah. Well, what's interesting, they, they've known these little uh, uh, microphages have been mm -hmm. uh, in your heart for a long time. They right. just, didn't just didn't know, know what why. they did. They didn't know what the function was. Right. They're, a defense, they're a defense mechanism. That's yeah. part of our immune system. Yeah. Well, see, I wonder if something like this could be utilized to help pull people out of atrial fibrillation or some of the other lethal heart rhythms, you know? Right. Maybe they're short on them. Maybe they're, right. they're not firing quite right. Because they find would, that yeah. the mice that don't have macrophages that are engineered not to have irregular heartbeats and their heartbeats really slow. So obviously these mm -hmm. things are really, really important. So just goes to show you as yeah. much as we think we know about anatomy and physiology and think it's kind of a static yeah. field, it is absolutely not yeah. because we're learning new things. All Always time. new things. And it's fascinating to, to learn yeah. from God's creation as well. So. Okay. So I guess we'll talk about the rest of this on Monday, plus a lot more things. I won't um, be here Monday. Yeah, I know. You won't be here. So i gotta, I'll be I got to deal with this with Ken. Oh, so, boy. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's so, going to be like, oh, I met Casting Crowns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to deal with the fame thing. So anyways, but so we are going to sign off. And um, uh, Ken and I will be back on May 1st. So see you then. God bless.